Good morning and welcome to Shore Church of God. My name is Jared and I have the honor and privilege of being your pastor this morning. It's so good to be together again this morning. I know it's just virtually, but man, it's just wonderful being a part of the whole stream and everyone checking in and saying, good morning. I can't wait to see your all faces and hear your laughter again uh, shortly, shortly, shortly. It's coming. Uh, this morning, I want to alert you that we are going to be taking communion at the end of today's service. So if you need to go around and find your saltine crackers, your apple juice, whatever you need to use as your elements for communion, you can be prepared for that at the end of the service. And so we want to invite you to be a part of that. Here at Shore Church of God, it is our mission to reach, grow, and serve the community for Christ. We reach by inviting everybody we know to participate on online and in-person services. And we want to go ahead and say, hey, do that right now. Like, share, comment, start a watch party. Do all the things right now. Did you do it? Did you do, do it? Okay. All right. Click the button. Do it. You can do it right now. Right. Okay, good. Um, second thing is we grow by taking part in our next steps guide that's found on our website. And we also participate in life groups that are in the fall and in the spring. You're going to hear a whole lot more about life groups and what they're, those opportunities a little later in the service. And we serve by joining in with our community and serving our community the best way we possibly can whenever those opportunities arise. Let's pray and start worshiping this morning. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for who you are, what you're about, and what you're doing in our lives. Lord, we thank you for the sunshine this morning. Lord, we ask you to be with us, to guide us, to inhabit the praises of our mouths, that we would bring a smile to your face this morning and how we worship you. Lord, some of us have heavy things weighing on our shoulders. Some of us are on the top of the world. Wherever we find ourselves this morning, we want to come in contact with you, to hear your voice, to feel you move inside us. I'm in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name in heaven my praise belongs to you forever this is my testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony oh this is my testimony and daughters bought with blood and washed in water sing the praises of the spirit son and father our god will finish what he started yes our god will finish what he started oh this is my testimony my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony this is my testimony
rewrote my story, I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. Oh, I'm alive. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony.
Good morning. Got a couple of announcements for you this morning. The first is this. Prayer Zoom happens every single Wednesday at 1 o'clock. This is a fantastic, wonderful place for us to share our praises and our prayer requests each week. Uh, if you've not been a part of this and you feel like, oh, man, I, would, I would like to be a part of it, but I don't know, it's been going on for a while, you are more than invited. We have new people coming in and out all the time. It's totally okay. All right. Uh, the reminder email goes out on Tuesdays. That also has the invite uh, copy link uh, in it as well, so you can participate in the prayer Zoom on Wednesdays. Second thing I have for you today is that we have um, our family worship guides go out every Saturday night. Uh, they are a wonderful tool that are, has been created to go along with our message series uh, to kind of help your kids participate in what's going on here at the service uh, and, and maybe throughout the week, maybe if it spurns some more uh, questions or comments or uh, sparks some interest in something that is said on Sunday morning, you can delve into that a whole lot deeper and the family worship guides. Those have been available since the beginning of this whole thing. So if you like it, you can just keep on going back uh, for about you know, 15, 16 weeks now. So uh, have fun with that. We also have some very unique and fun uh, kids ministry things that are going to happen soon. Uh, that will be told to you in just a couple weeks, so a little teaser there for you this morning. Uh, then we also have this morning, we're going to recognize our graduates. So this is a wonderful opportunity. I know that this year for you graduates, this was not what you thought your senior year, your freshman of college year was going to look like, right? That's, that was not, this was not ever on your list of what you thought things were going to be about and uh, we, we know that, but we also celebrate with you. We honor you. Uh, we're excited uh, for you in this next journey. I tell you what, it gets a little easier than this. Uh, not a whole lot easier, but it gets easier than what it is right now, okay? Uh, life does get easier. And so uh, we're going to go through some of these people. Uh, J.C. Ackerman has graduated from the University of Illinois. Uh, this is her in the go-kart, I believe. That was some fun uh, thing that they did at school. Uh, she will be, uh, she graduated from Illinois University and is working now in Naperville. I cannot believe JC is all grown up now. Um, our second graduate this morning is Christopher Cox. He graduated from Joliet West and is going to ISU. Our wonderful Christopher Cox, we're so proud of him and the man he has become. His twin sister, Maddie Cox, also graduated from Joliet West and is going to Loyola. And so... Um, as she works out how that goes right now. Um, but we're very proud of you, Maddie, and your adventures are just beginning. Maddie Maynard is a graduated from Manuka and is going to JJC right now, as well as being a dental hygienist. And has got all kinds of other plans once the stinking corona thing calms down a bit. We're very proud of you, Maddie, and all of the uh, fun adventures I know you will have. Dominic Scarcelli graduated with his master's from Notre Dame. Uh, he is now working in Washington, D.C., so make sure you remember uh, that name, Dominic Scarcelli. He will be a mover and a shaker. Uh, got all kinds of, of awesome things planned in store for himself there, and um, we're just we're really proud and just going to be riding on your coattails from now on, Dominic, so th thank you. Uh, Christopher, Christopher Van Eyck graduated from Manuka and is attending JJC's, getting his general ed stuff um, done, and hopes to move to UIC uh, in pursuing computer science here in a couple years when those gen ed stuff is done. Grads of 2020, we are so proud of you. We are so excited for you. You have left your mark on this place, literally and sometimes. Uh, but we, we love you, and uh, man, it's, I can't believe some of you are, uh, are this old, right? That makes, makes me feel kind of old. But we are so proud of you and excited for your next step in your journey this church loves you, whether we have to love you virtually or in actual physical space. We love you, love you, love you, and, and care for you. If you need us, we are there for you. At this time, we're going to take up our morning tithes and offerings. The quickest and easiest way to give is, of course, on our app or online at scog.com slash give or use the app that's available on the Google Play or the App Store. It takes about 45 seconds to set up. Two clicks of your thumb or forefinger once you have that going. You can also set up reoccurring giving if doing this every week starts to get a little nerve-wracking while you're trying to juggle the kids and do all the stuff at the couch. 
uh, watching uh, the service. I understand. Uh, we want to, those kids that we just got to see, they're not kids anymore. They're full adults. Um, Maddie and Christopher, one of the very first things I ever uh, did was go to their house with Kevin for a, for a birthday party, and they were just little guys. Uh, and I cannot believe they just graduated. But our tithes and offerings go to invest in those lives. Um, they go to invest in them to say, hey, we believe in you. We know you're going to have an amazing story to tell, and we get to be a part uh, maybe of the early chapters of that story. Let's pray this morning. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for these grads. Thank you for their lives. Thank you for the potential that they have and what you have done in their life already. Lord, we ask you to be with them and guide them. Um, De-stress them as they, 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 <laughs> they struggle through these moments. I imagine this fall has not been what they dreamed it would be. And Lord, make your presence known to them that they will know and feel your presence, that you have this, that nothing has shocked you, nothing is, nothing is too big for, for your control, and um, that you can use all things, whether that's hiccups in life, whether that's global pandemics, all things for your glory because you're infinite creative, creativity. Lord, we love you and we praise your name. Amen. Good morning. Uh, we're talking about how your story matters this morning, that your particular personal story matters this morning. We're in the middle of a series called Perfect Fit. Uh, how do you find your perfect fit in the kingdom of God? Well, the major way in which you find your perfect fit in the community of uh, the kingdom of God, community of God, it can be called either one, um, is that you understand your story and you understand that God is the author of your story and that who you were is not who you are going to be in the future. And the beautiful, wonderful thing about that is that God continually uses what's in your past to change other people's futures. And that is amazing. Once we start to redeem the, the hiccups of our life and even the victories of our life, and we start to let our stories intertwine with other people's stories, life changes for those around us. This is what... At the beginning of the church, church was, what the gathering of believers was. It was a time to come and share stories and to break bread, take communion with each other. So what church was, was a moment in which we came together, we shared our, our collective stories of what God is doing in our lives and what we're up to. And then we also, we took communion to share in what Jesus' story, what Jesus was up to in our lives. That, that's what church at its bare bones in the first century, and it should be even today, what it's all about is how this looks like, is, is sharing of story. So your story matters. Your story matters. And one of the neat things about uh, even electronic church, right, um, is that you can still be a part of people's stories and not be totally present with them. That story is able to trans transform and go over Facebook wires and uh, do the YouTube thing and do all the other things that we do. We don't have to actually be in person. Now, it's nice when you're in person and you get to sit face-to-face -face with somebody over a cup of coffee or over a campfire or, or do what, uh, over a, a dinner table and share story with each other. But we have the option. We have the capability of doing this electronically as well. As a pastor of a church... I find myself to be a collector and distributor of people's stories. This is one of the major things we do when we meet together on Sunday morning. It's uh, probably my second biggest thing that I do besides preach is I take other people's stories and then find connections for other people in the church. Maybe I find someone's uh, 
I, I hear a story or know what something's going, somebody's going through, but I know somebody else in the church who just came through that very thing. They've just been, you know, worked through and done the hard work of healing through disappointment, maybe of losing a child or uh, their marriage having a rough spot or, you know, the discipline issues of teenagers or uh, going through work issues. There's, there's these connections that can always be made. It's, hey, if I connect you with you, and it's not like, hey, you two really need to talk about this. I'm not playing a matchmaker here, but I'm like, hey, let's introduce Bob with Bill. Because I know they both, Bob just had kids graduate from high school, and Bill's got kids going in to junior high. I bet they're going to have something to share with each other. Like, let's just, just, just see what happens. And this is one of the fun things of, of being a pastor is starting to make those connections because you see the impact that stories can have, what people have gone through and how God has redeemed those issues to rewrite people's futures. And story is one of those things that I think people get embarrassed by when they have got an issue in their past. And they're like, oh, well, I could go to church just as long as no one ever finds about this. Just as long, I'll put on a, 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 a show because no one can know about my past. And that's really kind of a trick of Satan. Because there's people every day going through the same stuff, making the same mistakes, and they need to know this path. They need to know the story behind how they got out of that particular pit, how they got through that, how they redeemed through it. Like I said, the early church was all about coming together, sharing story, and sharing in Jesus' story. This is wonderful in in, in who we are as a church. Stories matter. Your story matters. One of the easiest vehicles in which we use to share story and to uh, interject into people's lives is called our life groups. We do life together. That's why we call them life groups instead of small groups. Uh, But they're called life groups because we do life together in them. We share our stories. We share who we are, what we're struggling with, and and who we want to become in these moments. Now, that might be under the guise of we're studying this book or listening to this this video or we're uh, doing some other thing. But at the heart of it is how does my story and your story rub together and we find out how God is moving in our lives. That's really what happens at life groups. In this season... Uh, We generally have life groups happening at people's homes all throughout uh, our community. And so um, we thought that maybe at this time period, inviting a bunch of people into your home wasn't going to be very popular. So we came up with a different solution for this, okay? You don't have, someone's having a panic attack right now. He's going to ask me to go to somebody's house. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. It's okay. We're going to leverage the beauty of the Zoom meetings. I know anybody who has kids wants to you know, strangle me right now. I'm like, if you tell me to go do a Google Meets or a Zoom meeting, I may throw something at you, Jared. You know, we can leverage this evil thing for good, all right? God creates all things. He can can turn any bad situation into a good situation. And so now that everyone is well-versed in how to set up Zoom meetings, we're going to use them for our life groups, okay? And so this particular fall season is going to be very interesting. We're all going to, as a church or in people from all over the country can participate in this. It's okay. It's all electronic. You do not have to be in Shorewood proper to be a part of this. And uh, what you can do is be a part of the Zoom meetings. Uh, They'll be happening all throughout the week. They'll all be exactly the same. They all will deal with the same content. They all will, uh, they're all going to be based off of my messages in Philippians. This will be starting in the middle of October. And so as we delve into what that looks like, we will be... um, all sharing, kind of going through the same uh, period of, of Scripture each and every week. What we need to do in that is kind of just be flexible and say, hey, what night of the week's better for me? We're not choosing life groups on what the curriculum is. Um, we're not choosing life groups on, uh, on really kind of our normal, uh, oh, well, that's the men's group or that's the women's group or that's the, they're, they're, it's going to be all Philippians groups and they're all going to be Uh, together in that. So it'd be really even, if you can't make it for your Monday night group, you can hit the Tuesday night group because they're going to be at the same place in the curriculum every single week because Sunday happens every single week. We're real excited about this. Philippians, we're going to call the series The Living Room, uh, but but Philippians really gets to the heart of people's issues. 
Uh, it deals a lot with anxiety. It deals a lot with angst. It deals with a lot with overcoming uh, problems in our life. I don't know. That might be applicable for right now. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe has some, some, some stress in your life. I don't know. Maybe you're just living, living your best life right now. I don't know. But uh, it's, it is what it is on that. And so we're going to jump into Philippians. We're writing it all ourselves. Um, it's going to be a wonderful adventure together. So what I need from you, not this morning. We're still collecting leaders. But if you're interested in leading one of these groups, you can email the office. But in just a few short weeks, we'll have all kinds of signups for you to participate in. Uh, we just need to know what night of the week you want to be a part of it or during the day if that's going to be available as well. But that will all be available electronically. And you can probably do it in the service because you, you, now you have Pastor Jerry can't see you getting on your phone. So now you can like on your couch be on your phone and doing what I asked you to do. So there you go. All right. Why does your story matter? God loves to use your story intertwined with his story to change the outcome of someone else's story. God loves to use your story intertwined with his story to change the outcome of someone else's story. This is, this is what, we, what he does. And it's wonderful uh, when you you get to see this start to happen and it happens all the time in our, in our mentoring groups. It happens in our, in, in our life groups. It happens just out in the lobby on Sunday morning is some, our stories start to rub up against each other and go, oh, wow, they went through that. They got through it. I'm in it right now. There is hope. I can survive this. I can survive having three-year-olds. It will, it will be okay. I can, I can, I can make it. Um, so there's just these, I, I'm, one of my baseball parents, they just had twins and uh, he was, he, he, he missed some communication with me because he was, he's like, I, I, the twins, were, we just, I, uh, and I said, I know, man, I have twins. He's like, you do. Tell me you survived. I was like, oh, I'm still breathing right now. It's okay. You see, and Bowen's one of them and he's alive. So we at least made it to 11 years old. Uh, so, you know, it's just the shared empathy of, hey, yeah, yeah, I've been through that. I know that. I can tell by the redness of your eyes, you haven't slept in a couple years. I get it. But it go, you can get through it. It's the sharing of the story. Because here's the truth. Everyone has a story. Everyone has a story. Everyone does. It may be a fun story. It may be a, a, a joyful story. It may be a rough story. It may be a story that reads more like a horror novel. Like It may be a mystery. You have no idea what's going on. You, you have a story. It may be an adventure. Um, we all have stories. We all have stories that we really kind of identify with. And maybe when you were a child, there was a story that you just wanted read to you over and 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 over again. And some of you who are parents, like, yeah, my kids got that story right now. And if I have to read it one more time, my eyes are going to bleed, right? We get that one, that one book comes at you and the pages are falling out. And you're like, we have a book that all of our kids loved and Kelly has it memorized. And she does not need, like, it's okay that the pages have fallen out. She can just, da, 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 da. It's, it's a poem, and she can just re recite the whole thing. My story was Sword in the Stone. You guys remember Sword in the Stone? If you have not watched Sword in the Stone, you're, you're basically a bad parent. You're not, not helping your kids out. I'm kidding, kind of. Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, no, uh, Sword in the Stone is just this wonderful, wonderful book. And it, it, it was my story. It piqued my imagination. I wanted to be um, Arthur in this. I wanted to be the kid who found significance and was the one that got to pull the sword out of the stone and got to be king and all the magic and the fun stuff that was going on. That was a story that I connected with. I wanted to be a part of that. Oh, man, I, I, can, I, just, I can see the scenes. I can sing all the songs. I just rewind it and play, rewind it and play, rewind it and play. And kids today don't even have to worry about rewinding. It's just, you know, we just go, 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 a sword in the stone, sword in the stone. You all have uh, those kind of stories in your life as well, probably. Everyone has a story they relate to. Everyone has a story that they want to play. Everyone has a story. Everyone has a past. But the beautiful thing is everyone has a future as well. Everyone has something they are not proud of. Everyone has something they are not proud of. There was that moment, there was that issue, there was that thing that your ears like smoke came out, you know, you, you wrecked that car, you did that thing, you disappointed so-and-so, you got fired because you were dumb for this, you did, you, whatever. Everyone has something that they're not proud of. 
And there's a huge scale, right? We all are like, well, I didn't murder anybody. Like, oh, I did. You know, redemption happens for all of us. Everyone has something on some sort of, in our lives, that they're not proud of. We all have it. And so our story and how we redeem it and how we reclaim it, that really sets the tone for what we're going to do with it. Because these things that we try to hide in our story are the very things that make us effective in the community, make us effective in the kingdom of God. When we redeem and reclaim, when God says, yeah, I know you did that, but I've got better for you. I know you did that, but are you going to let it beat you or are you going to overcome it? And when we make that transition, beautiful, wonderful things happen because God loves to use your story intertwined with his story to change the outcome of someone else's story. He loves to do that. Everyone has something that someone else can relate to. Everyone has something that someone else can relate to, whether that's a fun thing or that's a negative thing. Stories don't all have to be tragedies, right? They can be joyful, funny things. But everyone has something that someone else can relate to. We all have to go to work. We all have to breathe air. You know, we all have something. You're like, my story is not that, not that exciting. You know, you know how comforting that is to some people who have really exciting stories? I learned this. A 15-year-old boy taught me this. Because I have a, I, my high school experience is a pretty bland testimony. One of my really good friends in high school, when he would go off and do stupid things... Like, dude, why did you do that? I'm just building my testimony. That's a really bad theological stance. Um, but as you can see, a contrived 15-year-old church boy can, can, can try to figure that out in his head. Um, but I'm just building my testimony. No, quit doing stupid stuff. Oh, okay, fair enough. But I have a pretty bland testimony of high school years. And so when I was a youth pastor, um, I often didn't get to, you know, some of my stories weren't the, yeah, I was this horrible kid and I came to Jesus. It wasn't like the the... The, the big televangelist moment there. Um, and I was riding in a car one day with one of, my, one of my students. He said, you know how awesome that is? He said, my parents are a mess. They do stupid stuff all the time. They do stupid stuff in front of me all the time. Do you know how awesome it is to know that you don't have, like, this crazy past? Like, like someone can make it through this without doing really, really dumb things. I was like, huh. No, I always felt bad that I didn't go do drugs and then get redeemed from it. He's like, no, nah, man, no, nah, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't, no, 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 no. Because you didn't do that, that's really just, it's really helpful to me. Everyone has something that someone else can relate to. It may be the good things in your life, it may be the bad things in your life, but everyone has something that someone can relate to. One of the best examples of this, and one of the most prominent examples of this in Scripture is the Apostle Paul's story. The Apostle Paul, he writes his story down. He tells the story a lot because it is terrible. Paul is a horrible person uh, before he uh, finds, before Jesus meets him on the road. Uh, and when this happens, uh, Paul, Paul's basically a murderer. He is, um, there's no you know, way to sugarcoat it. He is chief of all jerks. He's going around, and what his job is to do is to find budding Christians and to put them on trial and to ha oversee their public execution. That's what he's doing. He's trying to snuff out Christianity. Now, he thinks he's doing what's right. He thinks he's doing what God wants him to do because um, he's missed the boat on who Jesus is. And this is very intense. It's very nasty. It's, we're not talking about... Like we're, we're talking like almost Gestapo type stuff. We're talking nasty extermination, take people out in the street, everyone grabs a stone and throws it at the person's head. That's what we're talking about. That's who this guy is. That's who Paul is, the writer of basically a third of the New Testament. That's who he is before he meets Jesus. He meets Jesus and is radically changed and becomes the greatest missionary the world has ever known. Paul is responsible for taking this Jewish sect of Christ followers and exploding it and starting churches all over the Roman Empire. The same man who was in the business of killing Christians is also the chief, 
missionary and responsible for starting a ton of churches all throughout the Roman Empire, all throughout Europe, and that's who he becomes. He wasn't defeated by his past story. Instead, he leveraged it, owned it, and said, God's going to use this. I know I'm messy. I know I've got a past. I know I've got issues, and this is who I'm going to be in the future, and I'm not going to be held back by that. This is what he does. He owns it. He owns it so much that he continually tells his story over and over and over again in Scripture, which means if it, comes, uh, if it appears in Scripture several times, he probably said it a lot. Like every time he preached, he was talking about what, who he was, who he is now, and who he's going to become. It's found in Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 22, Acts chapter 26. That's three times in just one book. Three times in one of the most important books in the whole Bible, we get Paul's testimony, his story of who I was and who I'm going to be and who I am now. He even writes his protege, uh, Timothy, in 1 Timothy 1.15. He says, here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of who I am the worst. And it's implied, he knows, this is Timothy, the guy he's been mentoring for years. He's, first Timothy's written to kind of set Timothy up. Like, here, go be a pastor. Go do this thing. Go oversee these churches. That's, that's what he's doing. And he said, listen, this is, this is who Jesus is. He came into the world to save sinners, to save the people you're going to. Oh, by the way, I'm the worst one. And you know my story. I was that guy. I was worse than that guy. That's who I am. And so he continually tells this story. And so for some reason, if you think, I can't tell my story, I'm too messy, I've too, got too much stuff in my past, people are going to be scared of me. Look, Paul killed people. Like he oversaw murders, public executions of people. That's what he did. So I'm pretty sure you're not on that scale. So your story matters. Your story can, can change people's lives. My mom is doing, uh, preparing a big talk on, and she's written a book on how grandparents can share their story with, um, with their grandchildren. So if you're interested in the book, you can email the office, and I'm, I'm, I know the author. I know a guy. I can hook you up with, uh, with the opportunity to get that. But um, not just plugging that, but I think it's very, very vital that grandparents share their faith stories, share their life stories with, uh, with their children or their grandchildren and their children. But there's a beautiful connection that can happen there, a beautiful um, building up, a heritage kind of legacy building that can happen in that. Um, but through that, we want to take some steps on how do you even start to, to share this story? How do you even uh, get um, with people in your community, people in your cul-de-sac, people on your, your teams, people um, that you, you have over? How do you, how do you share stories when you know there's something in your life that you think can help in their life, something that you've overcome that you know you can impart into somebody. I want to follow these, these steps. You got to find a good time. You got to find a good time. When babies are crying, when there's 18 people in the room and, and laughter's going on and all kinds of goofy stuff's happening, it's not a good time. So you got to find a good time. You're like, Jared, I don't have a good time. Fair enough. I understand that's a season in life. Uh, you got to find a good time. Uh, Maybe have a dinner. Uh, maybe uh, I don't. My personal best ministry time happens over tacos. All right, that's that's my best best ministry time happens over tacos. Uh, me Tierra has been very good for my my, my ministry, um, and that's that's what it is. You know, two El Pastor and one uh, Asada. Boom, ministry happens. So there we go. If you go out to tacos with me, just expect like Holy Spirit says, "Wow!" Uh, no, there's there's no guarantee of that. But anyway, uh, the best ministry time happens over those those moments. Take your time. You don't have to rush through this. You kind of, it's one of those things that you kind of probe and if distractions start happening, you're like, okay, we're going to, we'll back off because this is too important. If there's interest, if there's interest in the story, then we can start to have this conversation. But you don't have to rush through the story. Have time for questions. Have time for questions. This might be the most important. Be authentic. Be authentic. Be very clear. This is who I was. I'm not trying to make something up. 
I'm not trying to embellish. I'm not trying to make myself sound worse than I was or better than I was. This is who I was. This is who I am. This is who I am now. Still got problems. I've overcome this. We're doing this, blah, blah, blah. And then this is who I'm trying to be. This is who, through Jesus, I'm trying to be. I'm not there yet, but that's the direction I'm going. Am I going to stub my toe? Am I going to trip? Yes. But that's who I'm trying to be. Not who I wish to be, not in, in this fairy world of who I'm going to be, but this is who I'm trying to be. Next thing we want to do is we want to be concise. Don't make up your story. You don't need to make up your story. Like I just said about the kid in my youth group, like my bland story was exactly the story that he needed to hear. You don't have to make up something. Be concise. Be on point. The last thing is be intentional. Talk about why you want to share your story because you think it'll be helpful for their story. Like just be totally upfront, intentional about it. Hey, man, I want to talk to you about how I got through or how my marriage dealt with the issues. I don't really want to talk about that, Jared. Okay. Okay. A week later. Hey, man, you want to talk about that? Because uh, it's not getting any better at home. Be intentional. Respect people enough to, to take them seriously. Stories matter. In the story of our lives, God is writing romance, he's writing thrillers, he's writing adventures, he's writing mysteries. Sometimes it feels like he's writing a choose-your-own-adventure, right? You remember those? Page 58, if the dinosaur is going to eat the person, turn to page 74. If something else is going to happen, turn to, that's what sometimes when you feel like what college we're going to go to or what job we're supposed to take or whatever, that it feels like a choose-your-own-adventure. Um, and you're like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know what's going to, going to happen in that. Um, I had someone this week, like, I just wish God would tell me exactly what he wants me to do. Uh, and he's, I was like, that's not, he's like, I know that's not how it works, but that's what I wanted to happen. This is a grown person. This is a grown person. This wasn't an 18-year-old going, I don't know if I should ask him on a date. This was a grown person still struggling with the same idea. Be intentional on that. Stories matter. See, the world would look, the world would look totally different if Paul let his shame dictate the rest of his life. You know, Paul could have been acted upon by Jesus, and he's like, okay, I'm a Christian now. I give up the whole life of killing people. I'm going to be different, but you know, I, just, I just can't. I'm too embarrassed. I'm not going to go out and tell anybody about Jesus. If he would have kept his story of redemption to himself, that would have defeated the whole purpose of Paul. Paul, like, think of how, how much we would have missed of the intentionality of of Paul being who he was because he let God work through his story and he became the man that God wanted him to be. He didn't get stuck in the man that he was. He knew there was a hope and a future for him and he's constantly going to be striving towards that end. Think about what a life would be like if Peter would have stayed in his guilt and not become who Jesus wanted him to be. If Mark, the writer of the gospel of Mark, would have stayed the kid who got homesick on a mission trip and never wrote the gospel of Mark. Mark is the oldest of the gospels. It's where Luke and, and Matthew get most of their material. They kind of like said, oh, we're excited page, Mark here. Like what, what would have the New Testament looked like if Mark would just been the homesick missionary kid? I'm going home to mama. I'm going to be embarrassed and I'm never going to do what God wants me to do. Over and over and over again, we see these people faced with the opportunity to be defeated. But instead, they use their story to change the world. That opportunity is available to you and to me. You may not have the grand, crazy story like Paul does. But you do have a story, and it will matter to somebody else. Because God delights. He loves to use your story intertwined with his story to change the outcome of someone else's story. This morning, we get to take communion. Band, come on up. This morning, we get to take communion. And as I was thinking about the, the timing of communion this morning, 
I hope you have your elements. If not, this is your time to scurry around your house and find your crackers um, and your apple juice <clears throat> or grape juice and, and some stale bread if you have it because that's what this stuff kind of tastes like. Uh, but uh, if, you're, if you are Catholic, this whole idea of doing this I know is very um, interesting to you. It's okay, I promise. Um, what we're doing is, is, is participating in Jesus' story of redemption. And so the, the, whatever you're using as the bread to represent the body of Jesus' body broken for you is powerful and beautiful. Whatever you're using for the blood of Christ to be poured out for you to wash away your sins is beautiful. Because what you're doing is you're taking your story and you're interjecting Jesus' story into it. And it's this beautifully profound, gorgeous thing that we get to do. And no matter that we're doing the COVID version of communion right now that may feel a little awkward, may feel a little weird, Jesus understands and is ecstatic about joining his story with your story. So as we take whatever element we've got to be the body of Christ, and as we take whatever element we have to be be the blood of Christ, we, we get to participate that in this morning where you're joining his story and your story together and your story is being rewritten for his glory, for his beauty, to see some beautiful things happen. This morning, I want you to see and examine maybe your, your past story and say, Jesus, I need you. I know that you've washed me clean. I've been redeemed from this past. I've been, I've been set free from it. But I want to be someone who can be used in the kingdom of God from this moment forward to be different. But that my story can affect somebody else's eternity. That my story can affect somebody else's present because of what you're doing in my life. Let's pray this morning. God, thank you so much for today, and thank you for this, this moment and this time and this opportunity. Lord, we thank you for the, the opportunity to take communion. We thank you for the opportunity to participate in your story. And so, Lord, right now as we take uh, whatever element we have, this bread, uh, as the body of Christ, Lord, we, we thank you for this opportunity, and we, we remember what you've done in our life and how you're shaping us, and how you're moving us, and how you are setting us free. Lord, we ask you to guide us in that. As we take these elements, Lord, we, we want your story to be joined in with our story. And that we know that, yeah, maybe we have a past, maybe we have stuff we're not proud of, but you are an infinitely creative God who will leverage it all, will use it all for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's take these elements with me.
It is so good to worship with you all this morning. May you understand this morning that your story matters, that your story has the influence and the power and the presence to change people's present reality when you intertwine it with the redemptive power of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you all the days of your life. 
you are dismissed. Go with God. Sign off. Bye. Love you. See you later.